Good morning, students. To continue with our previous session and the unit one. Today we will study the data types in Python. As in Python, there are five data types are available. One is the number, string, list, tuple, and dictionary. In the number, we have covered how you can give integer value, float value. And today we will cover how we can represent our data in octal form, in binary form, or in any form, or in complex form. Firstly, I will start with the ideally. Here, if you're writing any value, suppose I'm taking A as 8, I want to give octal value to 8, then I will use OCT function. This is the octal value of A, this is the direct function, then is hexadecimal value for the same variable. This is the hexadecimal value of A, then is the binary value of A. This is the binary value of A. How you will get, give the complex number? You will write any value here. Suppose I'm writing two plus three J. If I will check the type of A, the type of A will be complex here. Now is the string. As strings are in Python are identified as the contiguous set of character represented in the quotation marks. As in today's lecture, I'm going to give you a very brief description about the data type because in detail, we are going to work on string, list, tuple, dictionary. Okay. So how you will represent your string in Python that you already know. If you give in single quotes or double quotes, you can give the string value. This is your string. Always note whatsoever is your value, either you have given in single quotes or in double quotes, your output will be represented in single quotes. Okay. Uh, this could be question sometime that uh, what will be the result of the that particular string either it is in a single course or in double course your result will always be represented in the single course so you want to just display h in your string that is called the indexing that i will come on later on you can represent single letter okay as you uh, i said this is the i uh, going with the Strings in Python are identified as the contiguous set of character. Contiguous means consecutive set of characters are represented in quotation marks. This will take the consecutive location. So starting from H is at the location zero, E is at one. This is the index value. L is at two. This is the another L is at three and this is a four. If you represent you a s five as you know there is no any value or you will get error check the error the name of the error is index error i said this is index value so when the index will not exist you will get an error here okay this is called the positive indexing that i will come on later on in detail uh, this is just a brief description even you can give the negative indexing here. If I will write here a minus one, I'm getting O. If we start with the positive indexing, your value will start from zero, one, two, and so on. Whatsoever is the size of the string, whatsoever the character in your string, 
and if you start your negative in taxing, it will start from minus one. It is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five is here. The same is the case if you give the index value which is not existing, you will get an error. The name of the error will be index error here. Fine. Pi can allow either pair of strings in a pair of string in single or double quotes. That I have told you how you can represent your string. Subset of string can be taken using this slice operator. I'm not going to give uh, an example of slice, how you can sl slice your value. Slice means how you can cut your value. That is also possible here. Suppose in the case of hello, you are going to represent only HT or you are going to represent only L. Not you want, don't want to show your O value here. That is the concept of slicing that we will come on later on. The plus sign is used for concatenation of string and the asterisk sign is for the repetition order. I will show you here. Suppose there are two strings. One string name is A. The name of the other string is B here. It will be get concatenated. Okay. Then there is a repetition of string. going to repeat your string, give a string value, then use the asterisk sign. How many times you want to repeat the string, it will be again repeated. Also note, the whatsoever is the value of your string as an output, it is in the single quotes, right? Then is your list. A list contain items separated by commas and enclosed within square brackets. To some extent, lists are similar to arrays in C. Uh, you must be clear in one thing that the coding of Python, the interpreter Python has been written in the C language. And uh, some things have been taken from your C language. It said, uh, as you represent array in your C, you represent your array in, I will show you. When you are going to represent your array in C, you write 12 uh, array is A equal to 12, 13, 14. And if I say at which position is the 12? You say, you generally say this is at A0 location. The value of A0 location is 12. A1 location is 13. A2 location is 14. This is the way we represent array in over C or C++. Okay. Similarly, as there are no directly arrays are available in Python, we're having list instead of arrays. One difference between them, all the items belonging to list can be of different data type. As the array depicts in C or C++, the definition of arrays, I will go again, how you will represent your array. If I say A is the array, if I say int A, that means my array should be of integer type only. Right, but as the list are concerned in the Python, there is no need to give the data type and you can take any type of data here. If I say this is my list with the name of, I will take another name, this is with the name of B here. B. If I say my first value is 12, then fine. If I say my second value is Hello. As you know, hello is a string value that is fine in the case of list. I said my third value is float value. That is also fine. Even I can give a list in between a list. I can give one, two, three. Now, if I check uh, what will be my index value of B here, I said B0 equal to 12. 
B1 equal to hello. B2 equal to 1, 2 and 3. I hope this is clear. First thing is how array differ from list. In the array, we have to give same type of data. But in the case of list, we can give different type of data here. And if we check the index value, it will be 12, it will be hello, and it will be list itself. We can give a list in between a list. Let's check the same example over here. B equal to a set. First value is 100. The other value is hello. The next value is 1.2 here. The next is one, two, three. You can take any value. You have to close the list. This is my list which has been displayed. Okay. If I check the index value of zero, that will be hundred. If I check the index value here is one, then it will be hello. If I check the index value of two, that is float. If I check the index value of three here, it is one, two, three. You can also assess one, two, and three differently, but we will do in detail when we will start with the topic of list in detail. Okay, this is a brief description about the list. The value stored in the list can be assessed using this slice operator. Here you have studied in your string, you can use this slice operator. Similarly, you can store your list and assess your list by using the slice operator. The indexes start at zero at the beginning of the list that we have already seen the indexing of the list has been started from zero. You can also concatenate the list by the plus sign. You can repeat the list by using the asterisk sign as in the case of string is zero. Okay. Next is tuples. A tuple is another data type that is similar to list. Okay, what is the difference between data uh, between list and tuple is? <coughs> it's a tuple is another data uh, sequence data type. But how you will represent your tuple? You will represent your tuple as I will take C variable here to represent the tuple. You have to give your value in round parentheses. Why? Right? You can give any value. Let's find out the operations related to your tuple is. I will take one, two, three. Let's perform indexing here. Indexing is not possible in the case of tuple. Okay. This is the main difference. Indexing is not performed in the case of double. Okay. And the other is list is mutable and I said list is mutable and tuple is immutable. I will write the word here. Mutable and immutable. Difference is mutable means which can be changed. As we check the definition of tuple, I haven't written anywhere that slicing is possible and anything is there. But in the case of this, and string as that indexing is possible here, uh, slicing is possible here. That means I can cut short my list. Suppose I want to use uh, only two words or three words in my string, uh, sorry, three characters in my string, then I can use the indexing. But in the case of tuple, you cannot do like this. So tuple is immutable, it cannot be changed. List and string is mutable. A tuple consists of number of values separated by commas. Unlike list, tuples are enclosed with the round parentheses. 
dictionaries are there. Dictionaries are like a hash type table type. They consist of key value pair. You are having one key and with that corresponding key, you can have any value. A dictionary key can be number or string. Means the value of key can be any number or string. Dictionary can be enclosed by curly braces and value is assigned by assessed using square brackets. Let's check by example here how you can write your dictionary. I will write here A as the dictionary type. I will give the curly parenthesis here. Then I will write one as the key yeah, and the corresponding key I give one value that is called A. You can give any value. Now check the value of dictionary that is one column. This is the way to give value. Firstly, the key value, then the column sign, and whatsoever the value you want to give. Either it is a number, list, string, tuple, or dictionary itself. You can give the value. Okay. If you check the value at zero, that is you are not getting any value here because with the corresponding value, uh, if you want to check the dictionary value, you have to Okay, I will start from new ideally and write the same example over here so it will be more visible to you. Uh, I will write here A equal to then writing A and its corresponding value. Okay. Uh, I said if I will use indexing, I will get error that is called key error. Why I, every time I write, read the error name? Because you must be clear the type of the error, which type of error it is doing. Because in dictionary, you can assess the value with the help of key only. The value of the key is one, the name of the key is one. So if you will write the key value here, you will get its corresponding value. Again, we will do in detail when we will go with the dictionary, the corresponding functions related to your dictionary. A dictionary key can be numbers or string. Dictionary are enclosed in curly braces. Yes, you have seen that it is enclosed in curly braces and values can be assigned and assessed using square brackets. You can see how we have assessed the value. We have assessed the value by using the square brackets. Okay. Next is operators. As you know, in different languages, we are having different type of operators are there. Okay. You have already studied the type of operators. In Python language, we are having following type of operators. First is the arithmetic operator. If we go with the arithmetic operator, we are having plus, minus, multiplication, division, modulus, Skier and floor value to check the floor value. Let's go with the ideally and find out the value here. You can use a equal to, I will write a equal to 10 and b equal to 20. You can add your number, you can subtract your number, you can, these are the easy ones, you can. Multiply your number, you can divide your number, you can get the modulus of your number, you can give the power of the number, that is 10 raised to power of 20, this is the answer, you can get the floor value as well. The floor value is zero 
Floor value means the upper value that is before your floating point. Here in this case, the upper value you have seen the when we divide, the answer is 0 0.5. When we do flow, then the answer will be 0 only. This is your arithmetic operator. Then we will go with the comparison operator. In the comparison operator, these are the arithmetic operators that we have tried. These are your comparison operators, that is double equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to. Let's check over the ideally. I will again start my ideally for your comparison operators. Firstly, I will give the value A equal to 10, B equal to 20. Okay, I said A is equal to B, then my answer. So when you check the equality, the answer is false, that is in the form of Boolean. That is the bool value we have already covered in our lab session. A is not equal to B, answer is true. A is less than B, true. A is greater than B, false. A is less than equal to B, true. A is greater than equal to B, then is false. These are your comparison operators. To continue with your membership operator, We are having membership operators as in and not in. As example is there, I will write over the ideally. I will write any value here. One, two, three, four is there. You want to check whether that your particular value will exist here or not. Where you will write, this is your tuple declaration. Where you will write here. 4 in A as the name of your tuple is A here. You want to check the 4 is existing in your tuple A is or not. You will get true. If you check 5 in A, it is not existing in the tuple, you will get false here. If you check 5 not in A, you will get true value here. Yes, 5 is not existing in my A. 4, not in A. As 4 is existing in my A tuple, you will get false because 4 is existing in my tuple. This is your membership operator. Then we come with identity operator. Is and is not is called your identity operator. Let's go with the example here. Again, I will take two values. A equal to 15. B equal to 10. A is B. That means, again, it is comparing. A is double equal to B or A is B. That is the same thing. This is not equal to B. A is not B, so my answer will be false here. If I write A is A, okay, I will close it and ideally, if I will write A equal to 10, B equal to 15, if A is B, that is false, a is not B. Yes, this is true. This is your identity operators. Then it's called the assignment operator that you have already studied. This is called as a shorthand operator in your C or C++ language. You can give the value here. This is single assignment. 
as you know, the value of uh, A is 10. What will be the result here? It will be 20. You know, the meaning of A plus equal to 10 is A equal to A plus 10. Similarly, you can use other type of assignment operator. If I will write here, A multiply equal to 20, answer will be 600. Okay. <coughs> now this is your poll time. I'm going to okay to continue with the next operator is your bitwise operator. In your bitwise operator, you can perform AND, OR, bitwise AND, bitwise OR, bitwise XOR, bitwise once complement, binary left shift, binary right shift. Uh, this is same as uh, you have performed in your C++ or C. But uh, here I will show you with one example. Okay, uh, there is a one query uh, from one person that uh, in the previous I was getting three A multiply. Okay, one thing is before moving to your bitwise A multiply equal to 20. In the previous, ideally, I was getting 600. That was not wrong because. Here that I have performed this operation. Okay. That's why I was getting A multiply equal to 20. It was taking any previous value here. Now you can check if you will multiply here A equal to, I, I will write any other value. I will write 40 here. A multiply equal to 40. And I will write, then answer is 1600 here. That was like uh, some previous value was on your ideally. So it was giving the value 600. When you check your video, then I will give a snapshot and explanation over it. That why I was getting 600. That has been removed from my screen right now. Okay, I will tell you later on that why it was 600 because it was taking some previous value. That's why it was 600. Otherwise, if you multiply your A, multi I will take another value, A multiply equal to 20, answer will be 400. 20 multiplied 20 answer will be 400. It was taking some previous value. So to continue with your ideally bitwise, I will give a value here 8 and value of B as 4. And I will perform one bitwise and a freedom. The answer is zero here because A is like one zero 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 and the B will be represented. Okay, I will go to the A is like let's check me the value, but I have taken okay A is eight here. 8 is represented in binaries 1000 and uh, B is represented as 0100. Okay. The AND will be performed. 00, zero is, I will write here, 
zero zero is zero 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 is again zero here zero one is zero and one zero is zero so if i check my screen i am getting my answer as zero if i perform the same operation as an or operator then what will be my answer that is 1100 the answer will be 12 here a and b the answer is 12 here even you can give your binary value here a equal to 0 b 1 0 b equal to 0 b value of 4 is 0 1 0 0 and you can perform your b twice and and or okay if you give your integer value it will be converted into your binary value and the operation will be performed you can check the same result if you want to give your binary value to give binary value as the uh, i want to give binary value of 8 before that i have to put 0 and b before that binary value similarly you can check your value of or it is 12 fine this is bitwise or bitwise and and uh, similarly you can perform your xor the answer is 12 here again then the complement of A and B is okay. This is and a complement of A is that is minus nine. How oh, you will check the complement here? Let's find out. This is very easy way to calculate. Whatsoever is your value, that will be minus as the value is eight minus one. That's why it's it will be nine and before that. A minus will be get prefix here. Okay. Then the binary left shift. If I will write here, <coughs> okay to continue with how you can uh, find out your left shift and right shift and you know there is a direct formula you don't have to confuse between these two let's take an example here uh, let's take a x a here And this is a formula that is x multiplied two raised to the power one. So you want to shift your eight by two bits, right? It will be when you want to go with the left shift, you will use your less than sign, and the less than sign will be your. You want to shift your eight by two bits. The binary of eight is. Thousand here. Then you want to shift by two bits. If I will write manually how the bits will be get shifted. I want to shift it to the first left. I will remove two left bits here, and will be get padding over here. If I check my case here, the answer will be thirty two. This is the manual work. You must be get the use. If I write here, you have to shift your bit by five. Then it will be difficult, maybe difficult for you to shift your bit. Uh, and the other thing is, the you have to write your integer value to binary value. Then you can find out what will be the shift value. The other is that is the correct formula to calculate how you can shift your Be towards left. This is your x, and this is your y. This is your value, and this is the shift. How much bit you tell you want to shift? You will write here eight multiply two raised to the power 
two. If I calculate it, the answer is same. That is thirty six. You have to just remember it to find out what will be the result if you want to shift your bid towards that. Uh, same is the case if you want to shift your bids towards right, then the formula is x multiply uh, divide by two raised to the power y. So this is the same example that I will take here. So instead of left shift, I will write here right shift. Then how will you calculate? Similar is I will write binary value thousand. I will add four bits to make it eight bits here. Then I have to move towards left, so I will remove two bits from the right side and will add here, and the answer will be two here. And the other thing is you can directly calculate the value of x is eight. Divided by two raised to power two, the answer is eight by four. Answer is two. Uh, let's check the same example over the ideally. <laughs> if a is eight. And I will give left shift by two. The answer is thirty-two. If eight, I will give right shift. The answer is two here. This is your bitwise operator. Okay. Now is Your logical operator. There are three logical operators that are available in your Python. One is AND or NOT. Uh, as the example is here, fifteen is less than ten is less than fifteen, and six is and six is less than four. The answer is false. Or you will write here. You can directly write the value. Ten is less than fifteen, and. As you know, in the case of and, if both the value of uh, uh, are true, then only you will get the true. And six is less than four. You will get the boolean value that is false. You can try with some other some other example with the or with the not. In the case of logical operator, this is the operator visitor that you have to remember. In case of equality, the associativity will come from left to right. As I have performed left shift here, a uh, right shift here, and the logical and over the ideal. Now is this is your operator precedence? Uh, your precedence value operator sign the operator name. Yeah, that you can refer when you are having number of operators over here, and uh, when there is an equality among the operators, then you can check the associativity from left to right. Then is called the conditional statement. Now we will come to the control structures, and under which we will study conditional statements. First is the if statement. Under it, we will also study if else statement, if elif else statement. That is your nested else if. Then is nested if statement. Not operator in if statement and operator in if statement in operator in if statement. That how you will use it. Today we will start with our if statement. Okay, I will open my ideally. As you know, these are all the decision making statements. If the condition is true, then it will work. 
otherwise it will not work okay uh, in this case when we have started over conditional statements or over control structures now the indentation is very much important now here we will discuss what is indentation and why it is important so here let's take one example x equal to 10 and y equal to 20 here if x is greater than y how you will represent it you have written if condition is there then you will put your colon sign here the colon is very much important you have to put your colon sign here after the condition it is not mandatory to give you parenthesis here you can also skip it you won't get any error now you will check uh, here when i give enter my cursor start blinking in between otherwise if I give enter here, my cursor will bring at the beginning. Now my cursor is in between. I'm getting one tab space here. Okay. This is my indentation. One tab equal to eight spaces. This is my indentation here. If I will write my code here, I will get an error. Okay. Okay. Firstly, we will check the output. What is the correct output? Then I will go with the error. If x is greater than y, then print. Okay, I will change the condition. S is less than y. Print. X is smaller. Then I will save my pro program with the name of. You can know. Where my file is stored in the C program files, Python 310 with the folder name. The folder name is with the version 310. I will give the name here. One dot py, py is default file. Yes it, yes, it has been stored. Let's run my code here and find Yes, x is smaller. What will happen if I will not give the indentation? Okay. Then it, we will get a dialog box. Here it is written. Then there is a syntax error. Expected an indentation block after a statement on line 3. Okay. Means... In this case, there is no any case of parenthesis is there. This is the case of indentation in Python. If I will give this indentation, I won't get any error. My code will return it. This is your if clause. This is your if statement. How you will write it? I will write the syntax over here. If then condition is there then column sign then the if suit okay and again i will repeat there is no any compulsion to give parenthesis either you will give you won't get any error here okay. now moving to over next statement that is called if else statement okay. again i will open this ideally i will write here if value of x is uh, 10 value of y x, uh, y is 20 if x is less than y print x is smaller then i will write else i have to write else here okay from where I have started my if, I have to write my else under this. Then else, after else, I have to give the colon. Then the indentation will appear itself. Then I will write else y is bigger. I will save the code. I will run this. 
uh, it was never, it is not closed. I will close it. I will run this code. X is smaller. This is my true statement here. Similarly, it will work as your equal statement work in your C or C++. The only difference is in the syntax here. If condition is there, then the suit, then the else condition is there, then the suit of else is there. Now is nested else if statement is there. Let's write one code here. Okay, I will write here nested if statement. I will write here value is of at least 500. If X is greater than 500, then I will print X is greater than 500, then Elif. Instead of else if, here you will write elif if x is less than 500, then again you will put one column sign here, then you will print x is less than, I have made this program static, I have given the value of x here. You can make it dynamic as well. Then I will make one another condition. Elif x is equal to 500. Print x is not a number. Okay. Let's make this statement. As you know, in C++, you have to give a final else here. Else, oh, okay. X is, I will give it last condition. X is 500. Else, in the else part, I will write X is not enough. Is not a number here. Save the code. And this x is 500. My elif condition is working. I will show you the code again. I have given one static value here. If x is greater than, then x is greater than 500. If x is less than, then this value will be get printed. The statement will be get printed. Then is equal to x is 500 else condition. This is the way by which you can use your nested else. As which case is not present in your uh, Python. Okay, so we will prefer here nested else statement. The rest of the statements we will cover in our next session. Thank you.